Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of my of my object of my solid object tutorial and I'm going to show you how to make one of these tetrahedrons. Here we have my previous example already built in and all in 3D. So now that I've shown you I can get rid of it to show you a new one. My layers are already set up here just like in my previous video and today here we have the tetrahedron. So let's get this started. Uh, first off you need to make a polygon. Set up the number of sides you want on it. In this case here it'll be free. And also check in here the edge by just tapping in an E like that. Now we need to specify the uh, first vertex of our polygon and the second one as well. So the coordinates for the first vertex will be zero. As you can see, we can now scale our triangle, the very base of our tetrahedron. And now we just place in one comma zero to identify the second vertex. And then automatically the entire triangle will be generated. Now let's give it a bit more mass, so, or at least get this um, completely covered. So just select your triangle and then go into region, Sele select it again, enter, and there you have it, a fully covered triangle. Make sure that your visual style is on x-ray so it just so you, so you can actually see it co complete. As you can see here, since I placed it on my 2D wireframe, it went back to, to being just a bunch of lines. Now, how to make the rest of the faces? This part is quite simple. We've seen this in the previous tutorial. Just select your face. Let's make a mirror of it, like that. Keep source objects. And now select this one again, copy it, and then Place your 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 cursor on the furthest point, pick it up, and then just place it there and there, just like that. Now we need to find a way to turn these faces up so we can complete our triangular py uh, pyramid, or most or uh, officially known as our tetrahedron. So how do we do this? Uh, first off, we must use the UCS command. Place it there and there. And now to determine our z-axis, we just make this and then 0, comma 0, and then let's say 100. As far as, as, far as I know, any measurement will do. It doesn't have to, to be specifically a, a 100. I just use it because I'm used to it. Now, since we've placed our entire grid in a vertical direction, now we can make a circle, select the very center of the axis, like that. Okay. Now, select UCS again, and click it again to place it back on our world preset. Select UCS again. Now select the center of this line and connect it to the furthest vertex to your left. And once again, we do this. Just like that. Select another circle and we repeat the process one more time. Looking good. As you can see, now we have a small intersection between our two circles. So I'm going to use this this face here and I'm going to align it with that very intersection. First I must create a turning edge which will be here by selecting th this point and then sele selecting it again and doing the same thing here and again and now we select our moving point and just connect it to that intersection. And as you can see our, our face is now in position. Now, I, I could just uh, do the same thing for the other faces, but I'm going to show you a special tool which will make this, trans this transformation a lot more interesting. So,
So I'm going to do a polar array of this face so it, so it will appear on the other two sides. First off, let's click UCS again and select the world preset down here again so we can go back to our standard grid. Select Array Classic, place it on Polar Array, uh, make sure that your object is selected, you can, do, you can do it like this, and make sure that your rotating point is right here. Check again. Usually I turn this off because, well, I guess it, it just works this way. S make sure the number of faces you want is free. Uh, it's not. It's not actually two because just because you you have two faces uh, missing, you need to count with your starting face, which is already there. Okay, so select free. Everything looks good and okay. And as you can see, we have our finished tetrahedron or triangular py pyramid, whatever you want to call it. Well, and this is part two of my solid objects tutorial.